Recreating some fall outfits, what I did this week in New York City, some fabulous fashion finds, and my two new bags. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shakura and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. So as you can see, I am in a different location and we will get into that later. But if you hear some noise, my husband is working next to me. It's just random things that are happening in the house. Just know that that's what's going on. I have such respect for folks that are able to mix and match patterns and to really wear it very well. I am not one of those people who are going to mix and match patterns, but I absolutely adore it when it's done correctly and I admire folks who can really pull it off. So I decided, hey, let me try to maybe play with this a little bit and see what I can do and what can I learn from it and how I could use my debt to make it work for me. And what I noticed was the easiest way to make mixing patterns and matching patterns work was to kind of keep it all in the same family, the same color family. That just makes it a little easier. There are some folks who can really pull it off and wear red and white stripes and plaid, with zebra print and snakeskin and tiger all together. I am just not one of those people, even though I'm sure if I'm able to master this, I'll be able to come up with something. But what I did find that I think is easier for me to try or for me to use my debt were these three ladies. These three ladies essentially took a very neutral palette and mixed it up with patterns, right? Whether it's a full leopard print dress and some snakeskin boots, which I think is fabulous and I am definitely too scared to wear, even though I can 100% admire this. I would never even think to put this together. Or if you go a little more matchy matchy with a leopard print blazer and a pair of leopard print boots and a polka dot dress, which is very interesting. I feel like the polka dots essentially are a solid, even though there's little dots, <laughs> right? It's a solid piece of clothing in that it doesn't clash too much or it doesn't clash with the leopard because there's not too much going on, even though it does still involve a pattern. And this one is perhaps my favorite and the easiest one for me to recreate as I already have leopard and I love leopard. I love a pinched right moment and the clean lines and the neutral palette just make it easier for me to wear. So if you would like to recreate something like this and use your debt a bit, but you don't have all the pieces, something like this from the Outnet, which I have spoken about many, many times would work so well with this look. I even like this option from Favorite Daughter. It is on sale right now, it's a bit cheaper, but it gives a very similar vibe. And there are plenty of options for a leopard print coat, but I thought that this one worked the best because it was a bit thinner. As layering two coats might be uncomfortable, one of them, in my opinion, should be thinner so that you get the look, but you are also pretty comfortable. I also love that she continued the visual layering and pattern mixing with in the shoes as well. So she could have worn just a plain pair of ballet flats or pointy toe loafers. Instead, she chose to wear a two-toned pointy toe loafer, which adds to the depth of the outfit. Right? So something like this from Jemmy, something like this from Vince Camuto, and even something like this from Tori Burch or G.H. Bass would give you a very similar vibe and add depth, like I said, to this overall look. If the leopard blazer and the polka dot is a little more interesting to you, and that is something that you could recreate with something that's already in your closet, that works well. But if you just like this better, there are a plethora of options. H&M has something that you can use even though it's not a blazer. Bloomingdale's has a stunning blazer that would 100% work with this outfit. And polka dot dresses are not that hard to find. This one from Mango, this one from Doen, and this one from Diane Van Furstenberg most definitely could work if you're trying to recreate this look. As far as leopard print boots are concerned, there are definitely options. The first one that comes to mind are these from Stowed, I believe, but it might be hard to find the exact same print as she has done on the boots as is in the blazer or the jacket. If you can find it, let me know. Otherwise, any other color boot would work as this is a neutral, you could definitely go black, you can go red, whatever tickles your fancy and makes you feel beautiful.
It has been about a year, maybe two years, where the scarf jacket has been on the scene, right? It was with Totem and that kind of blew up. And now there are so many different options and different colorways and different ways to wear them and even different price points if this is something that you like. I've seen some very chic ways to wear this and I've also seen people wear it in a very dressed down way with some sneakers and some sunglasses and it just really depends obviously on your style. But my absolute favorite way is the way that Rosie Huntington Whiteley has worn this outfit. There's something about it being leather or not cotton or wool that makes it a little more sleek and gives it a whole different vibe in my opinion. What I also think is interesting is that you don't have to necessarily have the scarf connected to the coat. You can get a beautiful oversized cashmere scarf or wool or whatever scarf you like and, and just double it over on your favorite wool coat or your favorite trench coat and it'll give a very similar vibe. But if you want the scarf jacket, besides this one from Totem, they are all over the place, quite literally. If you go to Cause, you can get these two that are just basic. It comes in white and black. You can also get this one from Cause that has a pinstripe. They definitely have a long version, which I absolutely love. And then they have this one that has leather details that give it a different vibe. If you are looking for the color of the season, they have this one at Mango. And if you want to save a little money, this one from Quince is going to be a fabulous option. Sandro, Helsa, there are so many options if you want to get the base of this outfit. But my absolutely favorite one is this one because it adds a level of sleekness just like rosie huntington whiteley this one gives just a little more even though i think that the both of them are very chic this one is just super super sleek to me add your favorite accessories whether it's sneakers heels or flats and you're ready to go So I don't remember if it was last video or the video, the video before that, but I asked you guys if you were tired of burgundy and most of us weren't tired of burgundy, even though there were people that were, but I want to offer you an alternative to wearing burgundy. What we're seeing now is full burgundy looks or burgundy and gray. And if you've watched my color theory video, you know that burgundy is a shade of red Therefore, it can be worn with things that go with red, right? So I absolutely love what Victoria Beckham did here in that she took this burgundy and paired it with this navy blue. If you haven't watched my color theory video, blue and red are primary colors and can be worn together. But when they are worn together, they do give a little elementary. It looks like something that would be in a kindergarten class or it could be really Superman, right? And it's a little more harsh. But when you take primary colors, particularly um, blue and red, and soften it a little bit, it's easy to wear and it becomes just a little bit more visually appealing and not so harsh. So what Victoria Beckham did here was taking this version of red, which is burgundy, and softening up the blue, whether it was a baby blue or a navy blue, it just works so, so well. I also love the gold boots with the burgundy because gold and burgundy is one of my favorite combinations. Now, yes, burgundy and silver work together. I know we are in our silver era, but I love gold. And I think I always will love gold just because I feel like that's what looks best on me. But if you really wanna play with it a little bit and look a little different than what everyone else is doing, try this trending color with a beautiful metallic because it is a trending color and it is everywhere. There are so many burgundy options. That mango coat I just showed you, that's a scarf coat, comes with this beautiful color. Mango, Quince, and Veronica Beard have beautiful options for skirts. This whole dress, from the outnet is fantastic. If you can pull this off, you are saying something. I love this. I just love the sleekness of this dress. Sam Edelman, Steve Madden, and all have great options for burgundy boots, different price points. And if you're just looking to add a little bit, something like this from Quince, which I believe is a wool or cashmere, I'll put it, I'll just clarify, is a beautiful color and not too expensive. Something like this from Modern Citizen is a classic top, but also has a little bit of interest with the tie at the waist and the flare in the waist. Uniqlo, The Gap, and J. Crew all have fabulous options for this beautiful color to be paired with something like a navy blue or blue. And if you are looking for gold boots because that's the kind of chick you are, these from Sam Edelman will work, these from Neiman Marcus, and even these from Macy's will work. I'm sure that you have a blue collar shirt 
in your closet. If you don't, this one from Cause will also do the trick. And yeah, put it all together and you have yourself a look. There is actually a pair of over the knee burgundy boots that I talk about later in the video in the fabulous fashion finds. We'll, we'll, when we get there, we'll talk about it. We'll have a conversation, okay? So I say all this to say to try something or try to do something different. I'm going to try to step out my box just a little bit to see if I can make it work for me and see if it can work for my personal style, but I'll let you know, we'll see. So as you can see, I am not in Brooklyn. I'm actually in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, but before I got here, there were a few other things that I did do. Hey girl, hey. So I am in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I am in the Poconos. My husband and I just decided that we need to get out of the city for a few days. So we got an Airbnb out here and it is beautiful, but also very crazy for the city girl. As soon as we got here, we saw deer in the backyard and just driving around, there are deer jumping out in front of cars. It's just absolutely different than Brooklyn, <laughs> obviously. Before I get into all that, I went to the Whitney for the Alvin Ailey exhibit. And if you are in New York City, you have got to get down there. It was an absolutely stunning exhibit. Just, uh, that exhibit is there for a good while I'll have it on the screen so if you don't get to it you know within the next week or two don't rush it's it's there for a while but again it's it's fabulous I wouldn't mind going to see it again and I'm doing this thing where I'm not necessarily slowing down because New York City is not really slow, but I'm trying to enjoy and romanticize every part of my life, right? So it's fall, it's a different season, and instead of being upset that the cold air, well, the cold air is supposed to be coming, <laughs> instead of being upset that summer is over, I'm trying to romanticize every bit of everything. So we went for a bike ride, yes, again, in Central Park, and it was one of the best things that I've ever done.
And now I'm here in the Poconos and we're staying in this cute little house. I'm gonna call it a cabin. I'm from New York. I feel like this is a cabin. <laughs> there's a fireplace, there's wood. I'm gonna call it a cabin. <laughs> so we're here chilling. We'll be here for a few days. Hopefully we'll be able to get in the hot tub. I'm gonna cook a bit and yeah, let's chill in the Poconos. <laughs> So if you follow my community page, you know that the Manure Atelier bag finally came in. And I literally cannot wait to show you. I also have that beautiful sequin cause bag that I want to tell you guys about that I didn't show you in the last video that we're going to talk about right now. So we talked about this cause bag in the last video and I told you that I got it and I wanted to show it to you because it is absolutely beautiful. If you remember, I also showed that it comes in a silver and while the silver is also beautiful, I already have a silver evening bag. In fact, I have several evening bags. So I thought that the getting the chocolate brown, which is not usually as readily available, would be the best choice for me. You can see how it like shimmers and sparkles and shines in the light. Imagine wearing this at night in a dimly lit room for dinner or whatever. And this is just sparkling, by the way. This is so pretty. Again, they have it in silver, but I needed it in brown. Okay, so I wanted to show you what the size is and what you could fit in here because this thing is not small. And if you're going out to wear it for dinner, this was like $100 $120. If you're going to wear it for dinner, you're not gonna need a whole bunch. This will probably have my, my, my lip gloss and other random makeup things. My lotion, this is one of my favorite hand lotions. A comb or a brush and my keys. I mean, and there's tons of space left in here, but like I said, if I'm going out at night, I don't need a whole bunch of stuff. And it's just, it's fabulous. <laughs> I'm so happy to have this and I can't wait to wear this and style this. If you are a clutch girl, you absolutely need this. So happy to have this. Okay, so I have another bag that I wanna show you that finally came in. So if you've been watching for the last three months, you know I've been talking about Manure Atelier and it finally, finally came in. I've been waiting two months for this. We all know that suede and brown are things of the season, even though they are mainstays for um, fall and winter but I didn't have a brown or a suede bag, believe it or not. And this one fit the bill. 
So as you saw, it did come with a dust bag, which is much needed. I will be treating the suede with some suede protector, obviously. And this bag, first of all, I do love it, but I am surprised that it's not a little more slouchy. I thought it was gonna be um, slouchy. It's not heavy, and, but admittedly I haven't put a whole bunch in it, um, but I do like how structured it is right now. So let me show you what fits inside this so you kind of get an idea of how big this really is. So if you're gonna use it on a daily basis, you might need it for work. You can put your planner in here like I have. We're gonna open this up a little bit because the sides can be open. That's another thing I wanted to show you. I have two pouches, one for my makeup, one for everything else, like my gum and my pens and everything. My wallet, my keys, my lotion, my comb, obviously, my glasses, and that does make it heavier, I'm not gonna lie, because I have a lot in here. <laughs> it does make it heavier, but everything you need fits in here just perfectly. Now, if you just wanna use it without the planner, these two would just be just fine, and it is definitely lighter. The planner makes it so much heavier, but everything else outside of the planner makes it lighter. Yeah, that, that planner was, <laughs> was making it very, very heavy, but it indeed can fit. Anyway, sis, I just wanted to show you my two new bags. I would love to tell you that this is all I'm getting for the season, but I don't want to lie to you. <laughs> I still really want that, that burgundy bag that I've been talking about. And if you think about it, this was purchased two months ago, right? I haven't spent a lot of money on a new bag in two months. So it kind of makes sense that I should get the burgundy one, don't you think? <laughs> anyway, these are the two brown bags, one for every day, one for night. And yeah, I'll show you whenever I get my next bag. It simply would not be a Simply Kura video if I didn't have some fabulous things to show you. Here are this week's fabulous fashion finds. This bag is from Source Unknown. It is very much giving me the row vibes. In fact, it looks almost exactly like that bag. This one that I'm showing you here is in suede. And they do have a version that is leather, but it's not real leather. But it is also $100 cheaper. So they have this in this color in suede, and then a black version and a deep brown version. But those are in, I believe, what they're calling vegan leather. But I feel like if you want a dupe to the real bag, and if you've been looking for that bag, and you don't want to spend that money, this is a fabulous option, especially if you want a black one and you don't care about if it's leather or not, or you are vegan and you rather it be not leather, fabulous option. I like this color. I like that it's suede. Either way, I just wanted to show you it because I think it's a fabulous dupe. Someone in one of the other videos, I showed some Tory Burch shoes. And one of you guys said that Tory Burch refuses to take her foot off of our necks <laughs> and i have to agree she has just really been killing it as of late in the last year or two and these we know are a version of those viral um silver shoes that came out was that last year you guys but they were open toe now there is a sling back pointy toe version and i'm here for it i personally prefer the black and gold version back in the day i really liked the silver and gold which i still really do but i know that i would get more wear out of the black and gold i love that one shoe is a circle and the other one is a square i don't know i love everything about this i think these are absolutely beautiful and yeah Tori Birch, man, she just keeps coming out with the fire, fire shoes. So earlier on in the video, I told you that I found some over the knee burgundy boots. And these are from Vince Camuto. They are leather. They are a fabulous color and they have a sensible heel. That is kind of the only thing that's throwing me off because I'm really used to an over the knee boot being either flat or having a high heel but i still think these are cute for the right person the best part about these boots is that they come in 
regular size calves wide and extra wide they also come in a variety of colors like black and brown but I think that if you are a person that needs a sensible heel and a wide calf and been looking for some over the knee boots this is a fabulous option because it's not very often you get all three of those things in one boot so the website Jay McLaughlin has some really really nice bags and I didn't want to take up all of the bags to show you everything today I did want to direct your attention to the website this is a very cute vanity bag in leather I love the deep green color of this bag this is very classic and if this is something you love this is a hundred percent something that you will have for a very long time we all know that the Sephora sale is going on right now and I did want to do a little segment of some of the things that I love but I don't know if I have time for that so I just wanted to show you these three things that are absolute staples in my repertoire and my routines the Mizani Miracle Milk is something I use on my hair every single week when I wash it it's a leave-in it's a heat protectant love it I cannot be without it if you are not new here you have seen me talk about this handy shower um, pretty much I call it a shower lotion <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a hard shower oil and all you have to do I've talked about this many times but I know I have new followers too all you have to do is while you're in the shower after you've showered put this all over your body rub it in rinse it off very lightly and then get out the shower pat dry and you are moisturized if you are not like me you don't have to put lotion on I will put on this I will also put on lotion I'll also put on oil that's just because I hate being dry and I'm a very dry person <laughs> but most people don't need to put on lotion after this look at the reviews see what people say obviously make your decision but I'm telling you I love this stuff for moisturization especially during the winter months and then this is a fairly new one this Westman Atelier concealer absolutely in love with it you have to work with it fairly quickly because it does dry and you also have to be a little light-handed because if you put too much on it's it's gonna look cakey so and that's actually why I love it a little goes a long way it looks very natural it brightens up under your eye and it's clean another thing that I think is fantastic so these are the three things that I wanted to show you that will always be in my rotation simply because the Sephora sale is now and yeah it's time to buy things and then this sweater from um, cause I believe is wool and I forgot the other thing but it's, it's a decent quality I'll put it in the description box and like in this video I love a off-the-shoulder sweater it shows a little bit of skin during the months where most of your body has to be covered but there's something really chic about it with like a one little diamond necklace or a statement earring unfortunately it only comes in black I do love black so I will probably be I mean I will be buying this <laughs> but yeah I just wanted to show you that because these kind of sweaters are staples in my fall and winter wardrobe and something I haven't really spoken about is the pillbox hat that is on trend right now and I didn't speak about it because I wasn't able to find exactly what I was looking for but I think these two are great examples of what's on trend and of course I will leave you a direct link but I love the way that these are both styled uh, maybe the hair but the black and the white one with the red lipstick Jeff's kiss right <laughs> and when I first heard that pill box hacks it hats were going to be back I thought like very 1960s and it just wasn't working out I couldn't see it in my head being modernized but looking at it here gives me very much modern vibes and I'm here for it if you've been looking for this type of hat again I will leave it in the description box I wanted to show you this bag from Kate Spade because it's a bit of a cheaper price point than some of the other bags I showed you it's still Kate Spade so be prepared to spend a few hundred dollars right but it is structured it's the perfect color that's on trend right now 
I personally love a top handle bag and we know that Kate Spade has decent quality so I just wanted to give you some more options if that's something that you were looking for and then every time I wear my necklace that's similar to this from Cezanne one of you all or a few of you all inquire about it and I do realize that some people don't want to spend a certain amount on a necklace so I found this one from Anthropology that is very similar a little sparkly which I love and about half the price of the Cezanne one so I will link Link the Cezanne one um, in the description box but I'll also link this one just in case you want to save some money and you just want the look and then these boots are from Steve Madden via Zappos I couldn't find them on the website and maybe I didn't check well enough but these are so good I love that the heel is not too high. I love the shape of the heel. The suede looks like rich. These are one of the boots that I might get just to see if the quality is decent. I just, I love these. I love a medium heel height boot, um, not too high. And I love that it's suede. It looks like, you know what? I don't know, I was about to say it looks kind of slouchy, but we shall see. I will add it to the description box. And the last thing I wanted to show you for this week's fashion finds was this, they're calling it a hobo bag, um, but it also can be used as a clutch. And this is so 2010s, right? This is so 2010s. I can totally see Joan Clayton from Girlfriends wearing this. In fact, she might have had a bag very similar to this, but bigger. So that's not 2010s, that's early 2000s, right? Whenever it was. <laughs> Whenever girlfriends came out, you guys know what I'm talking about. This is very much Joan Clayton. And yeah, I thought it was really cute. It does come in other colors, but because, you know, burgundy is the color of the season, I wanted to show you this bag. So anyway, friends, this week was very accessory heavy. Sometimes we have clothing hairy and sometimes it's accessories. I found all the accessories this week. I will see you next week in the Fabulous Fashion Vines. Anyway, you guys, thank you for bearing with me in a different location. I hope everything turned out right. I don't have my lights, so my lighting is off. You guys, I forgot my gel and my favorite brush. So if my hair is doing something crazy, sorry, my bad, but I had to do it this way. Will you try to step out your box a little bit when you are trying to recreate some outfits? If you are in New York or the tri-state area, if you ever will be in New York, I highly recommend going to the Whitney Museum. The exhibit was just fabulous. It was gorgeous. I still don't have a burgundy bag, so just wait and see if I get a new one. I'm not saying I'm not, but it just might happen. And have you found any fabulous finds this week? I know this week was a rough one. For me too, sis, it was a rough one. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I will see you in my next video.